We're at the bank and I just picked up one of these. <laughs> this weighs about 75 pounds. It's a hundred bucks in nickels. And we're gonna see how much money I can make selling old nickels. All right, we're back in the warehouse. My AC's broken today, so if I start sweating in three seconds, that's why. I've got a hundred bucks in nickels right here. And what I did differently from the pennies this time is I looked up what's valuable first and I did more time researching it. And so I wanna show you a few things I'm looking for with these, it's a hundred bucks of pennies, so what is that? There's 20, 2,000 pennies, a lot, or nickels, I mean, 2,000 nickels. Hey, it's like four days later and I'm editing the video and I made two really egregious mistakes. So I kept calling nickels pennies and then dimes one time. I know what they are, they're nickels. Also, the composition of the silver alloy war nickels, it's 56% copper, 35% silver, and 9% manganese. Not magnesium, manganese. Okay, I those two things I just didn't know what I was talking about. So there's the nickels and uh, I figured out looking at this right here, sprucecrafts.com, early Jefferson nickels, that uh, pretty much the only ones that are worth money besides the errors or anything weird like that are gonna be uh, 1955 and earlier, and then uh, there's 1982 D and P, which I saw those are worth like 30 cents, but I got conflicting reports on those. So I'll pull those aside if they're in good condition. Uh, 64 to 55 if they're in really nice condition I'll pull them aside and then 55 and earlier I will be saving those now there's also wartime silver pennies which are from 1942 until 1945 I believe and those are 40% silver uh, but then before 42 they're not silver so there's that three-year gap that I want to look for and there's a penny called the uh, it's right there 1943p3 over 2 which there's a, an error on the date so if i can find one of those and it's in it's in you know circulated condition that's mint it'll be worth like 30 bucks so we're looking for those i do not know what we're gonna find but uh, i've got my nickel box right here and i'm ready to go find some rare coins first roll literally the first roll like my third coin and i got one 1949 Jefferson nickel. It's kind of worn, but it's a good start. Uh, I think that the nickels are gonna be a lot more fun than the pennies. I don't think as many people coin roll hunt for nickels, so I think I'm gonna find more things that I think are interesting. And hopefully, worth some money. This one is worth nine cents, supposedly. I, uh, I'm not holding my breath. So this is way, way better than, than penny hunting. Penny hunting sucks compared to this. My second, third roll, and look what I've already found. Look, it's a, it's a buffalo nickel. Oh my gosh. It's flat and stuff, but like, I don't know. I never see these in circulation, and I see wheat pennies all the time. This is, uh, this is cool for me. Right there, one more, 19. 47 just missed the silver pen or the silver nickels by two years Ugh, two years still old and uh it's worth you know like six cents so <laughs> penny profit another old one really dark and muddy but it's 1957 not a valuable year i don't think but it's old we're not even through the first 10 and i found another one 1954 right there five cents united states currency I, these are the ones i found so far and then there's the uh there's the duds 10th roll and i got really so excited when i saw the date on here 1942 that means it's made out of silver right no it doesn't mean that there's no mint mark you see according to this list right here 1942 with no mint mark means it's regular 25% nickel, 75% copper, and not the 40% silver alloy solution. I think it's actually only 35% silver by weight, but whatever, who cares? It's still old, still cool. I pulled out a whole bunch of 1964 nickels right there. Uh, I've got so many now, I'm not sure it's worth doing because they're a lot more prevalent than I thought they would be. But this one right here is pretty cool. 19. 54 
and I don't see a mint mark on there, which is not the coolest in the world because I think if it was a, a S over D, it would be worth in the area of like $5. But um, yeah, I don't see it. I don't see anything. So it's just probably just 10 cents is what uh, it says on my list. Hey, I'm actually a crazy person and some of these pennies I didn't think had mint marks did have mint marks. It's on the back side of the coin. I'm gonna show you it right this now. This is the 1950 something and the 1949. And if you look at the right side, you see two little D's there. So these are actually mint mark D from Denver. Uh, they don't all have that, but on these older ones, that's where it is, I guess. I didn't see that in any of the forums I read, but now I know. Another one that's not too valuable, but it's pretty old. 1956, got some schmutz on it. I'll put that in my 1950s stack right there. And then those are the 60s. And then there's the, uh, the buffalo nickel that I got. Okay, do you see it? Do you see it? I'm going in closer. It's another Indian head nickel, another, uh, or buffalo nickel. I guess you could say either. It's an Indian head and it's a buffalo on back. I do not know where the date on these is supposed to be. The ones I've gotten so far are really worn off and I don't remember where it's supposed to be, but it's still cool to find them. I mean, I don't think they're worth very much, but they're still, they're still neat. There's a 1961 right there too. This is so much more fun than penny hunting. Okay, so I just unrolled this roll and right there. Now that looks like silver to me. I don't know. I haven't turned it over yet, but I think that's silver because it looks like it's tarnishing like silver. I've seen a lot of silver jewelry in my time I sell it. So this, oh, come on, come on. Yes, all right. You know, I could have known that actually by the mint mark right here. The P on back. I guess that's that's how you know it's silver. They have a P right there. But I, I could just tell by the way it was it was you know worn. That's a silver war nickel right there, 1943 P, which means it's worth, well, according to this list at least, that means it's worth about a dollar. About a dollar. I'm not sure what the silver value is. It might just be a dollar silver value. I'll, I'll look it up later and tell you. Man, we got a really worn or a nickel right there. I, I just want to show you the difference in how they look. So that's the silver nickel, and I'm pretty sure this is from the same era, but it's not, or at least it's worn to hell. So I'm guessing late 50s or early 50s, late 40s. Let's let's turn it over and see. 1949. But man, look at the corner or the edges. Look at the perimeter. It's completely worn down. It's been rolling for years. But yeah, that's how nickel and copper ages, and that's how silver ages. I love this so much. I, I've, I'm halfway through, and I want to show you one more thing I found. Look! It's a nut, just right on the top. It's a buffalo nickel. Right there. And this one looks like it's in the best condition out of all three I've found so far. Ah, no date, though. I got a feeling the date is in that bottom right corner. I don't know though. I know so little about these coins, but I'm so fascinated by them. I found these two guys just chilling by each other. 1959, 1953. Look at him. He's just staring at us right in the face. That buffalo nickel right there. I think this is the best condition on the, I think it's the, that's called the obverse, I think. But I'm not seeing a date anywhere. That size worn as hell. You can see the Liberty at least, but no, no uh, mint year. No mint mark, no year, no nothing. I found some more nickels and they look old, but I don't know. And they were both on their face down. So I, uh, I thought I could say, okay, let's, uh, let's do a little reveal. Number one. Wow. 1941. That's pretty old. Older than the, than the war penny or the war nickels. 1958, interesting, 17 year difference. Just unrolled this stack, you see it? Indian head nickel, no date. 
I'm gonna find one with a date and I'm gonna lose my mind. I, I got a feeling it's like right there or right there. Okay, same stack. We got a few face uppers. 64, 54, and this one right here. 1939, wow. I think this is the first year they had Jeff, or, uh, yeah, Jefferson Nichols. I think before that it was Indian Head. We have a Canadian Beaver nickel right there, and then this old one. So we know we know it's not silver, but how old is it? That's the other one. 1954. This coin roll was too good. I got so many good coins out of it. 1964, 1966. What, what's that doing here? That's too old. Oh, but because it, it has a little mark there. That's why I liked it. I thought that might be a mint mark where the, the press slammed down, but looking at it now, it's definitely not. 64, Indian head right there, and the date's on it, 1935. Finally. Man, that's a beauty. I'm sure there's way, way better condition ones. What's that right there? Look up top. Is that a little error, maybe? I don't know. I like this one, though. 1964, 1948. So a bunch of 64s. I pulled the 64s aside because if they're in mint condition, I was going to keep them. But I ended up just having way too many. So I'm going to go through these in a minute and take out the ones that aren't really, really good. And then I'll keep the uh, 19, what is that one? 48 and the Buffalo Nickel. The other one's probably not. So we got one right here. I already turned it over, but I flipped it back because I like doing the reveals. They're fun for me. What year do you think it is? Ha! Man, 1940. 1940 right there, top of the roll. Oh, whoops. No, I was right, 1940. Yeah, something about just the toning tells me this guy is old. 1941. 1941 right there. Must have been the, uh, the brother of that 1940 we just saw. We got one that looks old too. This one looks pretty old. What do you think, Ear? What, what do you think? Ah, oh, 1964. Darn. This is a tragedy. 1948. But it, somebody just dragged it along a concrete floor. It's got all these marring on it. Oh, man. Shoot. We got an old one down there. Two years off the silver. 1947. Man, that, this coin is so old. This coin is older than my parents. This guy looks old. This looks old. It's not a silver one. There's no mint mark on, on the top of the dome, but 1948, three years off. I just saw the edge right there. What year do you think it is? Oh, it's all worn. I don't know if we're gonna be able to see. What the heck happened there? Looks like somebody put some acid on there. Look at that guy. Just on the top of the on the top of the pile for me. 1940. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> Two of them. 1939, 1940. This is the same pile, and at the bottom it was this nasty, nasty nickel. Look at that. But look at the date. 1945. Now, we're not going to know this is silver until I flip it over, and there's a mint mark on back. It's got some massive tarnishing, so I think it might be silver, but I made that mistake one time before, so I'm not going to say where it is until I flip it over. Hey! Ooh, San Francisco. Nice. That guy's made of silver, or at least 35% of them is. It's 35% silver, 9% manganese, or magne magnesium, one of the, I don't remember. But I know it's only like 35% uh, silver, and then the rest is an alloy, where they call them 40% silver and nickels. Apparently, I did a little Wikipedia research, 
and the government said they could have up to half and half silver and they said the best mold was uh was 35 percent silver nine percent manganese and um 56 percent i don't know copper or zinc one of the two very last roll and they gave us one 1941 an old guy not made of silver but still cool Okay, it's day two. I finished up the nickels last night. It only took me 90 minutes to do 2,000 nickels, so that's really cool. Uh, an hour and a half to go through 50 rolls. That's way faster than pennies was for me. So now what we're gonna do is, I, I pulled out all the ones that were not worth any money. So these are the, are the nickels that, in my opinion, are at least worth a dime, which is not a lot of money, but you know they're nickels, so that's, uh, that's doubling your investment if you look at it that way. We're gonna see them now. These are the ones that are not worth much at all, just like a, a dime, basically, and that's probably only if they're sold in a collection, uh, how much they'll add, add to the value of everything I'm selling. 1950s with some mint marks. I looked uh, for steps on the back of the nickels because if they're in the 50s or earlier and they have the steps visible on the back of the nickel, then uh, based on what I saw on eBay, they could sell for a couple bucks, but none of these have those. Next is the Buffalo Nickels. These go for about a quarter, I think, a piece um, when they're slick like that. But two of them are probably worth more. So this one right here has uh, the S mint mark down there, if you can see it. So it's got a little bit of discerning information. The front's totally slick, so you can't really tell. But then this one right there uh, is in the best condition, in my opinion, and I think probably just objectively. There's no mint mark on the bottom. But when you turn it over, you can see the complete date and you can see uh, some good definition is face and nose. I guess also what I wanted to show you was uh, the horn. The horn and the eye are coming through, uh, whereas with the other ones, it's just totally, totally blank and slick. These are 1940s nickels, pre-war nickels, so no silver in there. These uh, 1940s and 41 are in decent condition. If they had a mint mark, I think they'd be worth a, you know about a buck fifty or two bucks. But uh, as it is, all together, I think I can get a buck fifty for those if I auction them off. These are post-war 1940s nickels, probably not very much at all. Um, I guess I included those in the buck fifty, so probably a dollar for these and fifty cents for those. These are two 1930s nickels. Uh, probably a dollar a piece. They're 1939. No mint mark, but they're in relatively good condition, from what I could tell. Uh, again, no, you know, no stairs in the back. But based on what I saw on eBay, I think I could auction these off and get that much for them. The real winners, in my opinion, well, besides these two buffalo nickels, are going to be the War dimes. These are 35% silver, 9% magnesium. 54 or whatever the rest is or 56 percent um copper and uh they're not in the best condition really kind of bad condition this one has got some scrapes on it this one is worn to hell that's a s mint mark a p mint mark this one there's a variety where um you would see a double printing on the p i obviously don't have that the p is only stamped one time but uh, still, probably worth a buck fifty a piece. So when you add these all together, that's fifteen seventy divided by an hour and a half. That's ten forty six an hour. For all this, uh, again, not like a great use of your time if you were self employed. But as a hobby, I definitely would favor this more than pennies. And so much that I think I might actually buy a few more boxes of these nickels to see if this, if this was uh, anomalous to get one, two, three, four, five, six, seven buffalo nickels, which I think is good. A 0.35% pull rate, a 0.1% pull rate for the silver nickels, and a 0.1% for the 30 nickels. I think this is unproportionately high, or misproportionately high. Guys, that was the video. If you enjoy weird ways to make money, subscribe, like, and tell me what ways you wanna learn about in the next video, because I like doing this. I like teaching people fun hobbies, uh, things like that where they can cash in, because hey, maybe you can't commit full-time to reselling. But what you can do is little hobbies like this that earn you more income and make your life better. See you guys later.